Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is street. Really? No, wait. No. S-T-R-E-E-T, street. Really? You'll bet your life. The National Broadcasting Company presents Roger Marks in You'll Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz show transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra $100. George, who's first? Well, Roger, remember last week you didn't have time to finish talking to our last couple, so they're back again tonight to play You Bet Your Life, and here they are, Gene Oddmark and Henry Piffle. Would you come in again, please, and meet Roger Mark. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Now then, uh, before we were interrupted last week, Henry, I learned you were a Los Angeles cab driver. That's, That's right. right. And Gene, we find out you're married? Yes. But I didn't get a chance to ask you how you met your husband. Uh, how did you meet him? Well, I actually met him on a blind date, but it wasn't really a blind date. Because... You mean you were loaded? No, no. <laughs> no, I met him on a blind date, but he wasn't blind. He wasn't blind to me because what I had seen his blind history before. You were groping at each other? <laughs> what, what is a blind date? Well, a real blind date is when you go on a date and you don't know what your date is to look like. Mm. But that's what I'm trying to say. I knew what he looked like at his time. Well, how did you know what he looked like if you'd never met him? Well, I'd seen his picture. I, I saw his picture. In, in the movie? No, no, no. I was at a girlfriend's house at a shorty house, and I saw his picture there. He was... What was your, what was your girlfriend doing with his picture? No, well, see, his picture was with a lot of pictures there. It was... It was just the party house, and the pictures were just going to change from the dance, and he had been a... What do you mean? They have all the boys? <laughs> you have all the boys' pictures no, in the security no. house? And then you go like this, and you say, there's one for you, one for me, and one for you. That was a good idea. I should have done Is that what you do? You no, come no. through this thing and well, look for a victim? Well, you just sort of look. You do look. You do? No, I just... To look. And, and, you, and, and what, is the, what attracted you to this particular victim? Oh, he's real good looking, and he's real, a lot of fun. He was real smart. He was? He's real smart. In what way? In what way? He wasn't smart enough to remain single. I mean, just how bright was he? Oh, well, you are measured, obviously, only an IQ about 135, I guess, maybe that's An IQ of 135? Well, your husband and I have something in common. Thank you. 105, 135 is exactly what I weigh. <laughs> What's his collar measurement? Wait, the collar measurement? Collar, around here, yes. Um, 16 and a half. 16 and a half, that's my IQ. <laughs> Now, Mr. Pepper, let's get back to you. When you were here last week, you had some fairly critical things to say about the people who ride in your taxi cab. Is this your general approach to life? Yeah, because I am, I am a perennial criticizer. I'm an improver. I'm, I'm the guy who's against you. You're a nonconformist. Yes, yes, all the time. But uh -huh. well, what, what do you gripe about? I mean, everything. I've been giving the yellow cab company suggestions for 17 years <laughs> on the improved business. They still got the suggestions, they still have the business, they didn't do a thing I told them. <laughs> well, there is one obvious way in which in the they army, could improve the same, the, same, the same thing in the army. Uh -huh. I was over here when the war broke out, so, so I enlisted. I tried to enlist. They turned me down. A week later, I was drafted. <laughs> All right, so I go there and I tell them, I, I tell them I speak German, I speak French, I speak Italian, a uh, little bit of English, I hope. And I, I asked them, I said, well, I've lived in Europe, I know the country, I know everything about Europe. They said, this is terrific. They wrote it all down on record, everything. Send it to Asia. <laughs> <laughs> but I took it then. Are you Ferrara? Yeah. You are, huh? Yeah. You mean you're married? Yeah. And now her name is Pepple, too? Yeah. What a dirty trick to play on a girl. Yeah. <laughs> That's what my wife says, too. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Henry, do you take a lot of kidding about your name? Oh, yeah, all the time. But it doesn't bother me. No? What do they say to you? Well, you know, friends would be, would be sitting around, you know. And sitting around what? At home, when my mother was still alive, and we'd be drinking coffee or something, and the, the phone would ring, and my mother would pick up the phone, and somebody would say to her, Hello? Could I speak to Mrs. Gisella? I'd rather see a <laughs> 
he was going to say, yes, yes. And she said, well, is that the Gizella Vyavitsev paper that has the shoe store in Boston? And my mother would say, no. And said, well, then I got the wrong Gizella Vyavitsev paper. <laughs> <laughs> you mean this fellow called up every night and asked him about it? He called up once in a while and said things were okay uh, all the time. Did, but didn't your father object to this? My father? No, he did my father. Why should he object? It's good business. He, my father was managing my mother. <laughs> Just by the telephone? You know? Not by the telephone, in the business. Mm -hmm. My mother used to be a very, very famous actress in Europe. Is that so? Yes, very famous. She was the equivalent of, the equivalent of Ethel Barrymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mary Dressler. Mm -hmm. was a real, real great actress. And he was managing her affairs. That's the reason. Well, what name did she play under? Did they love her to take <laughs> I knew her very well. We played together one time in a shoe store in Boston. <laughs> now, what does your wife do? She complains. <laughs> well, you have a typically ha happy marriage, right? Yes, yeah, very, very much. We like each other very much. Now, how did you meet your wife? In the army. <laughs> in the army? Yeah. You mean she was the enemy even then? No, not then. No. No. <laughs> well, how did you meet her? Well, I was in the army and there was a, I was a private. Mm -hmm. And she was a captain. <laughs> and we couldn't, we couldn't dance together and we couldn't go to the show together and we couldn't talk Well, a lot of privates can't dance with their captain. Well, it was against regulation. That's not customary either. So we got married. <laughs> the best thing we can do is get married. You won't get around any regulations. Get married. <laughs> then they set up new regulations and got to work. You got married so you wouldn't break regulations. Exactly. I mean, it's awful. Two weeks later. <laughs> I think she did it. I don't know. She must have given me a promotion or something. You know, that's like shooting. It's not to cure a headache. <laughs> well, how has your marriage worked out, Dave? Do you ever hey. argue? All the time. You All do. the time. But we enjoy it. You're kidding, huh? No, no. We're exactly the opposite. Uh, what, what? You quarrel a lot? We quarrel all the time. About what? Everything that comes along, there's always a reason to argue. You see, when you first my wife, uh, no, she's Republican. You're I'm a Democrat. Democrat. Yes. So she, she, she's born in the United States. Did you know she was a Republican when you married her? Yeah, she wasn't ashamed of it. <laughs> I told her I was a Democrat. She said, I'll marry you nevertheless. So it came out easy. Uh, well, you were both very broad-minded about it. Yeah. Well, honey, it's been refreshing. All the time, right? Yes, it is. We need more men like you, especially on a rainy night when we're looking for a cat. I'll be there. Now then, you have chosen, out of our list of 331 categories, you selected a dictionary quiz. I'm going to give you the words. You give me the meanings. If you miss two in a row, you'll forbid you fish. Yeah. Yeah. If you get four in a row right, yeah. uh, you win a thousand dollars. Are you are you ready? All right. What is a pachyderm? P a c h y d e r m. Talk it over. Prehistoric mm -hmm. animal. No, I'm sorry. No, no, it's an elephant. Or oh, a rhinoceros, but they're not pretty. I'm thinking of something about with the nose thing. Oh. You were thinking of something with a nose? Yeah. <laughs> you have one wrong now, Henry. Uh, uh, don't get the next one wrong or you're out of the game. Oh, okay. This one she'll know. What is an osculation? It's a kid. It's a kid. It's a kid. <laughs> and you have one right. <laughs> All right, now what is nepotism? <laughs> No, it's the excessive favoring of relatives. That is, if you're in an important job and you give a relative who is an incompetent a job, that's mm -hmm. nepotism. Mm -hmm. He isn't necessarily an incompetent, but he usually is. They have one wrong again. All right, now what is an apiary? A P I A R Y. Apiary? You don't know guess. Relationship to an ape? No. No, I think no. 
didn't give up. It's a, it's a bug house. No, a bee house. <laughs> a bee house, yes, that's where uh, bees live. Could have picked something else than yes. Yeah. Well, you have two wrong. You're out of the game. I'm sorry, Miss Tunero. You're all through. However, we don't want you to go away empty-handed, so I'm going to ask you one more question for a hundred bucks. And please, no help, because this is a very difficult question. Get a ride and you get a hundred dollars. Which is the female, the hen or the rooster? You answer. You answer. <laughs> okay. The hen is usually the female. So I'm sorry you didn't win more, but thanks anyway for being on the show. You bet your luck. See you later. Once again, the one and only Groucho. Groucho, Dick, and Dara Preble are standing by, so folks, you can please and meet Groucho Marks. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra fifty dollars. It's a common word, something you see every day. Dick and Dara Preble. Dick, your sister is a very attractive girl, and so you'll understand why I talk to her first, won't you? Well, Roger, she's not my sister; she's my wife. Well, in that case, she's still beautiful, but not quite as attractive as she was a moment ago. <laughs> Well, what is your hometown, Dara? Uh, Los Angeles, California. Oh, you look like a typical California beauty. Now, where, where were you born? I was born in 55th and Broadway. Oh. And which corner, do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> because if you ever get back to your birthplace, remember, you can now make a right-hand turn against the light. <laughs> Dick, where are you from? Well, I was born in Waterbury, Connecticut, Groucho, but I grew up in Hingham, Massachusetts, and Milton, Massachusetts. Oh. <laughs> What sort of work do you do? Uh, I'm in the uh, group insurance business. I sell group life insurance. Mm. Well, do you insure valuables like Dara? Yes, I, uh, I might even say that Dara probably has more insurance than she needs. What a temptation that must be. <laughs> Does that make you uneasy, Dara? No. Well, how did that happen to the wife of an insurance man? I would imagine you'd protect her against this assault. Well, actually, Groucho, I sold her some insurance before I knew we were going to get married later on. And, uh, oh, I that's a new approach. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I got stuck because now I have to pay the premium. <laughs> that's poetic justice if I ever heard it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened on your first day with this insurance company, Casanova, Dara? Well, uh, he called me and asked me if I wanted to go for a cup of coffee, and I said, could I bring a girlfriend? He said, no. <laughs> I don't blame him. After all, he had a dime invested in you, and why should he throw away a second dime on an unknown quantity? So what happened after that? Did you two start uh, mooning around on the next date? No, he said if you want to see me, you call me. Oh, the independent type, eh? You know, 30 years ago, I tried that on a girl in Toledo, and I'm still waiting for the phone to ring. Well, Dick, my apologies. I certainly underestimated. You've got something, and furthermore, I'd like to have it. You know what that certain something is that you've got, Dick? No, I don't believe well, I've got you. have got a beautiful wife who is heavily insured. <laughs> if he ever brings you a glass of warm milk before you go to bed, take my advice and have it analyzed. <laughs> now, do you love birds? Have any arguments? Uh, I don't mean violent ones, you know. Just normal ones, like uh, where you bounce a flat iron off his head and uh, he tries to run over you with the car. Well, occasionally we have an argument about our uh, year old baby. Oh, you have a child, huh? Yes, uh -huh. a little boy. And I want to have a maid for the baby, a uh -huh. nurse. Well, I'm on Dick's side there. I think he should wait until the boy is around 18 and let him get his own maid. <laughs> What's your objection to a maid, uh, Dick? Well, nothing, actually, Groucho. Uh, I just don't want the baby to become too fond of the maid. <laughs> that isn't the problem. The problem is to how to keep you from getting too fond of the maid. <laughs> so anyway, we wish you lots of luck, and let's tell you about your luck. Now, I don't know what you've chosen here, but uh, it looks like uh, cities and small towns in the United States. Is that right? Mm-hmm. All the cities and towns, you tell me the state. Greenville, Hattiesburg, Vicksburg, and Leakesville. Mississippi, Grant. Mississippi is right. We don't want track, one right, three more right, and we'll have a thousand dollars. In what state are these places? Uh, Minot, M I N O T, Fargo, McCluskey, and Cavalier. North Dakota? Mm -hmm. How did you know that? Because eh? <laughs> you told me. <laughs> You're halfway to your thousand. The next two right, it's yours. 
Here are the places. What's the state? Clarksburg, Parkersburg, Berkeley Springs, and Buchanan. Buchanan, Buchanan, B-U-C-K-H-A-N-N-O-N, Buchanan. I don't know, Groucho. I think a guess would be Wyoming. It's pretty close. It's West Virginia. <laughs> when I have one wrong, don't get the next one wrong, or it's all over for you. Now, what state is these cities and towns? Elmira, Malone, Herkimer, and Utica. New York. New York. How did you know that? Yes, he told me. <laughs> all right. What Ready? Chambersburg, Reading, Altoona, and McKeesport. What state are they in? Uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is right. Two right now. In what state are these? Provo, St. George, Ogden, and Logan. Oh. Utah. Utah. One more right, and you have a thousand dollars. Benton, Radford, Galax, and Roanoke. What state? Virginia. Virginia is right. <laughs> and you got four in a row, so you win one thousand dollars. <laughs> Now, you want $1,000. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at 10000 So go over there and sit down and think about it. And if we don't see you later, thanks for being on the show. Thank, Thank you. you, Gretchen. Thank Bye. you. From November 4th, 1957, you're listening to Groucho Marx on You Bet Your Life. On the Golden now, George, let's find out what our young married couple is going to do about the big money. All right, Dick and uh, Dara Preble, would you come back, please? Well, I'm glad to see you again. You're going to try for the big money, eh? You want $1,000. Now, if you decide to try for the 10 and you fail, you wind up with a total of $500. So we're going to go for the big money. You're going to go for the big money. Mm. Now, get together and pick a number from 1 to 10 and then spin the wheel. If any number besides the one you pick comes up, this question is worth $2,000. However, if your number comes up, this question is worth $10,000. Now, what number do you want? Ten. Ten? Give it a fling. Well, you couldn't get any closer. <laughs> Your number was 10 and it landed on 9, so this question is worth $2,000. That's not too bad, is it? Huh? That would be too bad if you don't get it. <laughs> All right, for $2,000, who succeeded Sir Anthony Eden as Prime Minister of England? Back and over. <laughs> What's the answer you decided on? Oh, I know, Groucho. I just can't think. Take a guess. No, no, no. I guess we don't know. It's Harold Macmillan. Oh. I'm sorry, mister, but you wind up with $500. That isn't too bad. Congratulations, and thanks for being with us. <laughs> The secret word tonight is ham. H-A-N-D. Ham? Oh, that's me, huh? You bet your life. <laughs> the National Broadcasting Company presents Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz show transcribed from Hollywood. Groucho meets our first contestants in just one minute. Henderson, Olsen, and me. We're the NBC Band Stand 3. We sing, and we play, and we keep things gay on NBC Band Stand every day. That's Henderson, Olsen, and me. A me. The latest hit tunes. And old favorites, too. Games, gags, and guest stars to entertain you. Olsen sings the songs you love, we found. Henderson makes the big band sound. We're live. We're fun. The blues will run. From Henderson, Olsen, and me. Enjoy 90 wonderful minutes of music and fun with Skitch Henderson and the band of stars, Dorothy Olsen and me. 
Bert Parks, MC. Live on NBC Bandstand weekday mornings over most of these stations. From Henderson Olson. and me, we're the NBC Bandstand Three. From Henderson Olson. and me, we're the NBC Bandstand. Here he is, the one, the only. <laughs> Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra $100. George, who's first? Groucho, I'd like you to meet Angeline Papadakis and Joseph Interlegi. So both you in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word, and you each take home an extra $50. It's a common word, something you see every day. Angelina Papadakis and Joseph Interlegi, yeah? Papadakis and Interlegi, it sounds like an intersection in Scranton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I can just hear a young couple saying, I'll meet you at 3 o'clock in the morning at Papadakis and Interlegi. <laughs> and, 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 and be sure to bring your switchblade. <laughs> my, name, my name is Joseph Interlegi. In? I-N-T-E-R-L-I-G-G-I. I even spell it, too. Can you spell it? No, I'm sorry, I can't. Angelina, why are you sorry that you can't spell it? You ought to be very happy about it. Angelina, you're taller than uh, Joe, so I'll start with you. I assume Papadakis is a Greek name, is that That's right? That's right. So I'll dispense with that question. Now, what part of Guatemala are you from? <laughs> I'm from Enid, Oklahoma. Are you married? Yes, I'm married. Oh, how did you meet Mr. Papadakis? Well, I met him at a Greek baptism. And my husband was, my future husband, was a godfather. So he, um, he was spending all his time with me from then on. Uh -huh. And my father-in-law wanted him back in San Pedro to tend to business. And not in Los Angeles, so he says, hurry up and marry her and get her over with. <laughs> so what business is your father-in-law in? Well, he has five liquor stores. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who runs these stores? Oh, my husband. Well, would you have married him if he'd had five grocery stores? Well, I would have married him if he had five banks. <laughs> well, that I can understand. <laughs> Angeline, what keeps you busy? Uh, do you work around the five liquor stores, or do you confine your activities to uh, housework? Well, I have a husband and three boys to take care of in my house. But in the evening, I, I go to university, too, and I take extension courses. You take care of three kids all day, and you still have strength enough to go to night school? What's yeah. the reason for the evening courses? Are you getting ready with a good sideline in case prohibition comes back? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to work for a, a BA and then a master's and eventually a PhD. Mm -hmm. Very impressive. What do you want to be, finally, ultimately? Ultimately, eventually. a writer. A writer, hmm? All the writers I know would rather be in the liquor business. <laughs> now then, Mr. Interleggi. Uh, my name no, Mr. Interleggi, Mr. Grachima. My name is Joseph Interleggi. I-N-T-E-R-L-I-G-G-I. -I. You know, I'm getting so that I can spell it now, too. <laughs> well, let's find out some facts about you. Are you of Italian descent? My father and mother are. Uh. <laughs> well, uh, where were you born? I'm an Indian. Where? I'm an Indian. What is it like in I'm an Indian? I don't know, but because I was young. Well, is it anything like it is in Muncie, Indiana? Well, I don't care remember because I go away from I'm an Indian to Cleveland, Ohio when I have four years old. You went to Cleveland when you were four years That's old? That's right. Where'd you go, for the World Series? No, from Cleveland, Ohio, daddy and mama take me to Sicily. Oh. How long were you in Italy? Sixteen years. Oh. I'm from Sicily. Sicily. C I. You spell Sicily. Well, C I. So far, you're spelling Chicago. please. S I C. S I C. I N T E R L E G G R. Fifty is a leggy. Yeah. Now, what did you do in Sicily, Joe? Did you have a job there? Yes, I have. What did you do? Well, when I was the age eight years old, when I can't say when daddy take me to Sicily, I used to take my shoes off and socks 
and mix for the clay on my, on my feet. And uh, started to mix the clay. And the age 11 years old already, I was profession to make a 1,000 brick every day. You made 1,000 brick every day? That's right. And when I was at the age of 14 years old, I had a seven man under me. <laughs> were, you working in a, were you working in a cemetery then? <laughs> I used to work in my farm. That's home. an old joke, Joe, but uh, okay. that's a very grave situation, having a seven man. <laughs> on a very intellectual plane this conversation and I hate to change it for one that's thought of his money but I know you want to get a crack at the big money so we're going to play you bet your life and remember Joe your partner yes. she's a college girl so before you answer you discuss it with the lady over there. all right all right you selected facts about presidents I'll ask you some questions if you miss two in a row you're out if you get four in a row right you win a thousand dollars what musical composition is traditionally played upon the entrance of the president talk it over Talk it over. Hail the Chief. Hail to the Chief is right. That's one right. Now then, what president was originally a very successful mining engineer? Herbert Hoover. Herbert Hoover is right. That's two right. What president was nicknamed Old Hickory? Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson is right. Get the next one right, and you have a thousand dollars. Oh, boy! <laughs> <laughs> That's not a very dignified attitude for a mother. <laughs> In what city was George Washington inaugurated? New York. New York City. There's no use fooling around with us. She knows all the answers. And you got four in a row, so you won one thousand dollars. Well, you won a thousand dollars. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and at the back end of the show and try to double your money. You may even get a crack at ten thousand. And no matter what you decide to do, Thank thanks you. for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Out of it, that's you. In just a moment, our second couple will join Groucho to play You Bet Your Life. Thanks for your carefulness. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bob Hope speaking for the National Safety Council, and I just want to say thanks for the memory of winters you have spent without an accident. Your eyes and mind are never blind for all your charisma, and we thank you so much. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you drive with extra care in the wintertime, take a bow. And take a special tip from the National Safety Council. Poor visibility is a great winter driving hazard. Keep your lights, windshield wipers, blades and defroster in good condition. Keep the icicles off your eyelashes and see your way through the winter safely. Thanks to your carefulness. You'll keep your winter free of traffic tragedy and it pays you so much uh mitzi lynn and ralph barry are waiting to talk to you now so fortune lynn please and meet groucho marx welcome to your betcha life say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars it's a common word something you always have with you mitzi lynn and ralph barry is that right where are you from, Missy? Well, I was born in Trenton, New Jersey. And I lived part of my life in uh, Long Branch, New Jersey, which is a summer resort. Mm -hmm. Then came to California with my parents, and now I'm living in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, are you married? Yes, I am. How long have you been married? Eleven years. Eleven years? You don't look as though you've been married a day more than two years. Do you realize that? <laughs> you don't mean that. No, I don't. Occasionally, I tell little white lies up here. <laughs> Well, you're a very young-looking woman, anyhow. What does your husband do? Well, during the week, he's a barber. But on the weekends, he plays drums. In the barbershop? No. He plays drums on weekends, huh? Yes. I guess on weekends, it's a relief to look at some skin that doesn't have hair on it. <laughs> Take your time. We have no place to go in <laughs> Mr. Barry, there's something familiar about you. You're somebody I should know. Let's see, Barry, Barry, let's see, is it straw? No. Huckle? No. Goose? No. Raz? I'm Wild Red Barry, the professional wrestler. <laughs> Wild Red Barry? I never heard him. <laughs> I know who you are, Red. I knew it all the time. I've never seen you wrestle, but I'd like to go to one of your rehearsals sometime. 
Brett, I'm going to ask you a straightforward question, and I expect a crooked answer. <laughs> now tell me, is wrestling really fixed? No. <laughs> I knew I'd get the truth out of you. <laughs> now, Red, if you can throw these other wrestlers around like you throw the bull, you should be the greatest wrestler in the world. <laughs> Have you ever thought of that? I am the greatest wrestler in all the world. You are. On what basis do you make this modest claim? Have you ever won anything of importance? I mean, yeah. in the ring. Gotcho, for your information edification, I was world light heavyweight wrestling champion three times. I was light a junior heavyweight champion of the world one time. I was champion of all Texas. <laughs> I was Central States heavyweight wrestling champion and Heart of America heavyweight wrestling champion. Is that sufficient evidence? How do you account for your success, Red? You don't seem to be particularly large and muscular. How can you beat all these gorillas? Uh, are you better at memorizing the script? <laughs> because of my brilliant intellect. Because I cause my opponents to proceed into a state of bewilderment, genuine uncertainty, and disturbing sense of inferiority, and on the horns of dilemma, and I paralyze, pulverize, terrorize, demoralize, eradicate, destroy, demolish, ostracize, and drive him to the sudden depths of despair and right to the mat. You just talk him to death, is that it? <laughs> have you had any mishaps in the ring? I mean, have you ever had any bad bruises? I, mean, I have had my ribs broke, my collarbone, my shoulders. My hands are broke up, my teeth knocked off. Had enough... Wait a minute. You said oh. you didn't work. Okay, Ducky. Up in the, up in the bird nest. You said the secret word, so you win $50. With the conversation you were making there, you were bound to say the secret word. <laughs> and then every other word. Now tell us what happened to you. What have you uh, broken in the ring? I've had my ribs broke, my collarbone, my shoulders, my hands are broken up, my teeth knocked off. I've had enough stitches in this eye here to make Grandma a quilt. And I had my neck broke and my back broken. Well, Red, now I remember where I've seen you. You were hanging up in a meat market. <laughs> now, how can you have bro all these bro broken bones and still say that you're in good physical shape? Why? Because medical authorities tell me at Mayo Clinic and Research Kansas City, where I go through every year, that I am a specimen of physical perfection. See. And I'm just like a 16-year-old boy. I have the proclivity and the endurance, the stamina, an orderly mind, tiger-sharp brain, and split-second accuracy, and all the attributes that it takes to be in physical condition. This is what the doctor told oh, you yes, at Mayo? He, he told me that. He said, you have it, boy. And how soon after that did they take the doctor away? <laughs> Well, you know, I'm astonished that a man of, of action uh, can be so articulate. How do you account for this uh, streak of Demosthenes here? Due to the fact, uh, Groucho, the cause of so much misunderstanding in this old world is the fact that people are not able to express themselves adequately, accurately, and convincingly, and expressively. So I've uh, made it a habit and took plenty of time out so that people can understand just exactly what I have to say, so that even the most stupid dolt among them may understand what I have to say. Well, why are you looking at me that way? <laughs> Brett, I would never suspect that you had such a sensitive nature. Do you have any examples of your tender side that yes. you care to give us? Got you. I'm glad you said that. Well, because no one will ever know when that little black drop will fall from an angel's trembling pen and stain that final unfinished paragraph in the book of life. So if with pleasure you are viewing any work a man is doing, if you like him or you love him, let him know it. Do not withhold your approbation. Until that pastor makes oration, and he lies with snow white lilies o'er his brow. For it makes no difference how loud you shout it, he'll never care about it, or he'll never know how many teardrops that you shed. So if you feel there's some praise due him, now's the time to shoot it to him, because he cannot read his tombstone when he's dead. <laughs> If you don't get the Pulitzer Award for poetry this year, there's something screwy going on at Columbia University. Brad, that was simply beautiful. There isn't a dry eye in the house. In fact, I'm afraid to look. I wouldn't be surprised if nobody's left in the house. Hello out there! Well, this has been a most enlightening evening. It's one of the most enlightening evenings I've spent in years. I'm still in the dark, but it sure has been enlightening. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. 
Will you throw Mr. Fenneman over your shoulder? <laughs> no, he wouldn't do that. I'm glad. All right, now you selected folk tones and old time favorites. The orchestra will play the tune. You tell me the name of it. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Tell me this name uh, of this old favorite. Play, Jack. <laughs> But my name is Groucho. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, wait for the wagon. Oh. You have one wrong now. Don't get the next one wrong, or the game is over. No, for. I know you played this. Uh, what is it, Jack? Of tending on the old campground, on the attending tonight on the old campground. You now have one right again. You know what can happen if he goes out of here broke? He's liable to throw you over her shoulder. You? <laughs> Not me. No, I'm sitting down. Huh? All right, what is the name of this old song? Play it, Jack. Oh, where has my little dog gone? I don't know, but that's the right answer. You have two right now. Now, what is this one? Hit it, Jack. Good morning. The bear went over the mountain. That's a dirty trick, giving him a, a song with two names. I've never heard it called Bear Went Over the Mountain. I've always heard we won't go home until morning. It was always Bear Went Over the Mountain, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the name of this uh, old favorite, Professor. <laughs> Kentucky no, home. I'm sorry. That's where the bear went over the mountain. <laughs> I think you got four in a row, so you win one thousand dollars. Give her a big kiss. Right? Oh, wait a minute. Now, just a moment. You won a thousand dollars. You can keep it and quit. A bear went over the mountain. <laughs> or you can come back at the end, at the end of the show, and try to double your money. You may even get a crack of ten thousand dollars. So go over there and sit down on his lap. And think about it. And no matter what you decide to do, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. We'll find out if any of our contestants will try for $10,000 in just a moment. In Robin Hood's day, that was the sound that used to get the news around. Yes, the men of Sherwood Forest used to shoot message-bearing arrows from relay point to relay point until everybody got the news. Well, a message can travel fairly rapidly for a short distance via bow and arrow, but the system wouldn't work very well for news that had to travel many miles to its destination. Keeping up with events is even more important for us today than it was for Robin Hood's men, harassed as they were by the sheriff. And fortunately, we have the fastest means of communication ever devised. We have radio. And NBC Radio, with news on the hour, keeps us posted on worldwide events wherever they happen, as soon as they happen. In our day and age, this is the sound that really gets the news around. This is Leon Pearson inviting you to keep up with the news on the hour, all day, every day, over most of these NBC stations. Well, Groucho, uh, Mitzi Lynn and Wild Red Barry have decided to keep their winnings. But our first couple wants to tell us their decision, so here they are, Mrs. Papadakis and Joseph Interlegi. Would you come in, please? Interlegi. Hey, you're right. No, Interlegi. Interlegi. I-N-T-E-R-L-I-G-G-I. -G -G -I. All right. Now you want $1,000. If you decide to try for the 10 and you fail, you wind up with a total of 500 What are you going to do? You can quit. Well, you can go ahead. I'd like to continue. You want to continue? What about you, Joe? I'll continue. All right. Now get together and you pick a number from 1 to 10 and then spin the wheel. If any number besides the one you pick comes up, this question is worth two thousand mm dollars. -hmm. However, if your number comes up, this question is worth ten thousand. What number do you want? Five. Is that all right with you? Five. Well, I like eight. Well, take thirteen. <laughs> we'll give you eight. You want eight? Eight. Eight. All right. Eight. Give it a sign. <laughs> Number 
it was eight and it came up four, so this question is worth two thousand dollars. You ready? During World War II, a family of five brothers, all saving on the same destroyer, were lost when their ship went down in a battle in the Pacific. For two thousand dollars, what was the family name of these five celebrated Navy heroes? <laughs> Delaggy, what is the uh, answer? I don't know, Mr. Ruffin. What's the answer? I saw the movie, too. Well? I don't know. It's the Sullivan. Sullivan, boy. That's right. I'm sorry, sorry. Mister, but you wind up with a total of 500. That isn't too bad. Congratulations, and thanks for being thanks with thanks us. For <laughs> you Bet Your Life is transcribed in Hollywood. Produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman reminding you to tune in again next week, same time, same station, to hear the one, the only, Groucho. For the housewife, the wage earner, investors big and small, commentary of vital interest on pocketbook news tonight on most of these NBC stations. <laughs> This is Nightline, the line that's open at the right place at the right moment, and this is Don Amici pinch-hitting for Walter O'Keefe. Here's our first Nightline call tonight. Groucho Marx, and you bet your life. And George, you tell us, what's tonight's secret word? Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word is picture. P-I-C-T-U-R-E. Really? You bet your life. The National Broadcasting Company presents Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz show transcribed from Hollywood. Groucho meets our first contestants in just one minute. Hi there, this is Steve Allen, and I want to talk to you for a minute about retirement. Do you look forward to it? Well, that's great if you've had a busy life and the retirement is your own choice. But how would you like to be forced into retirement years before you began really living? Retired at 10 or 20, at 30. Retired by paralytic polio. That would be grim. Well, it is grim and tragic for thousands of victims of infantile paralysis. The victims of the years when polio's shadow fell yearly on the country and today's Salk vaccine was only a scientist's dream. But there is hope if you help through the 1958 March of Dimes and make rehabilitation possible wherever rehabilitation is possible. Help bring back from a retirement they never wanted hundreds and hundreds of polio victims. Please join the 1958 March of Dimes today. Here he is, the one, the only... <laughs> well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra $100. George, who's first? Groucho, uh, Louise Squire and Ted Anderson are waiting to talk to you, so folks, you please come in and meet... Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Wise. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. <laughs> Louis Squire and Ted Anderson. Where are you from, Louise? Memphis. Memphis? Memphis. Can you Memphis. sing the Memphis Blues? No. <laughs> well, in the interest of good reporting, I'd like to ask your age. You can answer any way you like. Well, uh, my driver's license says 37. 37? Yes. Well, could I see your driver's license? Sir? Well, yes. Uh, uh, well, maybe. That's a real yeah. woman. He wants her, him to hold the bag already. Yeah. And they just met. Well, you must get pinched a lot. You have this pretty handy here, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, all right. It says age 37. And this license is official. It's signed by Calvin Coolidge. It, uh... <laughs> that's the wrong one. Oh. Where are you from, Mr. Squire, Mr. Anderson? I'm an associate professor at UCLA. 
UCLA, is that one of those diploma mills that are under investigation? <laughs> Dad, you say you're a college professor. Now, uh, what do you teach? Uh, business forecasting, corporation finance, and a course for small businessmen. Well, how tall are these businessmen? <laughs> what is business forecasting? Well, is that we any more accurate than the weather forecaster? Uh, yes, it's more accurate than the weather. We try to predict whether business is going to go up in the future or go down and by how much. Oh, I see. Well, with the dollar going down probably for the third time, what do you recommend that people do with their money, assuming that they still have any? Uh, for myself, I'd buy probably common stocks and real estate. Mm -hmm. This is a personal matter, but... It uh, certainly is with me. <laughs> uh, me uh, personally, I have no complaint about common stocks. I made a killing in the market a few years back. <laughs> That's true. I shot my broker. <laughs> I didn't get him any too soon, either, because he was just about to commit suicide. <laughs> now, where would you buy real estate? Certainly not in L.A. Prices here already are completely out of hand. Well, I followed uh, 386 cities, and I like this area very much, and I'm very optimistic about land values between here and San Diego. Mm -hmm. Do you own much property? Oh, yes, 4,000 acres. Where is this property? Australia. <laughs> I thought you said between here and San Diego. You must have really got lost on the freeway. <laughs> well, you're, you're an unusual couple, and I'd like to continue this, but frankly, I'm too scared, so let's play you bet your life. <laughs> now, uh, from our list of 265 categories, you selected sports. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. <clears> now, remember, we want one answer between you, so don't answer before you talk to your partner. Now, uh, Ed Brown, Eddie LeBaron, and George Shaw all play the same position. What is it? Quarterback. Quarterback is right. You don't have one right. <clears throat> Who was the first woman to swim the English Channel both ways? Miss Chadwick. Florence, Florence Chadwick. Chadwick is right. You have two right, two more right, and you'll have $1,000. Now, what woman was named six times as Woman Athlete of the Year? Uh, I believe it was Babe Dietrichson. Yes, it was, the late Babe Dietrichson. You're probably, almost there. Probably the greatest athlete of our time. Now, what <clears throat> team was baseball's first all-professional team? It is still one of the major league teams. <clears throat> Cincinnati. Cincinnati Red... Hey, buddy, is that what you do up in that college? <laughs> there? Sit there and read the sports book, huh? You got four in a row right, you have $1,000. Why do you want to... <laughs> You're too smart for us. As a rule, they don't win it that swiftly, huh? Well, you want $1,000. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at 10000 So go over there and sit down and think about it. And if we don't see you later, thanks for being on the show. And thank you. In just a moment, our second couple will join Groucho to play You Bet Your Life. When the ice is smooth and the sky is blue and the skaters' waltz is played for two. You make it Pabst, cause Pabst makes it perfect. Yes, Pabst makes it perfect. Just as we always have ever since 1844. So next time, you make it Pabst because Pabst makes it perfect. America's blue ribbon beer from the Pabst Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yes, Pabst makes it perfect. Groucho, I have Elsie Jarrah and Bob Brown waiting to talk to you, so folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide an extra $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Elsie Jarrah and Bob Brown. Elsie, are you named after Elf Landon or uh, after a little elf? <laughs> you mean the little things in the fourth dancing? No. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all, yeah. <laughs> and where are you from, Elf? I am from Berlin. Berlin. Uh, yes. Coming to you from the western part of uh, sure, Deutschland? Sure, I come from West Berlin. Uh, the western Berlin, yeah. huh? How long did you, uh, how long ago did you leave Berlin? Two years ago. Uh -huh. How old were you when you came to this country? Uh-huh. Uh, you like to try out how old I am. Yes. You uh, certainly have a suspicious mind, Elfie. Oh. Do you honestly think I go around prying into people's business and try to find out how old oh, they are? Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> Not in a million years. <laughs> How old are you, Elf? 
<laughs> That's my sweet secret. Well, you're charming, attractive, and youthful enough to be exciting. Mm -hmm. And old enough to be sneaky about your age. <laughs> now, your name is Bob uh, Brown, huh? Yes, Groucho. That's an odd name. Uh, how did you ever in the world get a name like Bob Brown? Huh? I had relatives. <laughs> Now, who do you work for, Bob? Well, I'm a superior court bailiff. Oh, well, that's a, that's a very good job, especially if you like to sleep in the daytime. <laughs> <laughs> well, what exactly are the duties of a bailiff? Well, do you know what a bailiff is? Uh... No, I don't know what well, I wish a you'd bailiff. explain it to me because I don't know either. No. What, do you, what do you think it is? Bailiff? What can I say? I don't well, know. Well, couldn't you ad-lib something in German? Huh? I never Don't they have term. bailiffs in, in Deutschland? Maybe, but maybe it's not a bill. <laughs> a bailiff uh, is the officer of the court, and he takes care of the, the various the duties in the courtroom. When the judge takes the bench, uh, all... The judge takes the, the bench? Yes. The bench. You mean the judge is a crook, too? <laughs> well, he doesn't take it very far. Maybe he means Staatsanwalt. It's probably... A, is it a Staatsanwalt? I wouldn't know. No? You don't know? No. no. Well, what else do you do besides uh, being a Staatsanwalt? <laughs> is das nicht ein Staatsanwalt? <laughs> ja, das ist ein Staatsanwalt. Ja, das ist ein Staatsanwalt. <laughs> Staatsanwalt, eine krumme Kerl, eine hinten her, eine große Schere. I do schönes, I do bravo, it's nothing really. I was just making fun, that's all. Now, tomorrow morning, when you're in that courtroom, and the judge asks you what you are, you tell him you're a Staatsanwalt, huh? Uh, I'll try to remember that. Yes, and I throw you right in the can. Huh? You say your name is Elsie Staatsanwalt? Nine. Nine. Elsie Gerard. Oh, Gerard, huh? Yeah. Did, did you have a job in Germany, Elsie? Yes, as an actress. Oh, you were an actress? Yes. Well, I thought so. You're a very pretty woman. Thank you. Well, how would you, were you discovered on a stool in a drugstore eating sauerkraut? No. How does a girl get to be an actress in Germany? Oh, we must learn about two years, and after we must pass an examination. An examination? Yes. Right? What kind of an... <laughs> Well, what kind of an examination? Do you have to be able to read and write? No, we must play about uh, um, play short about? Uh, auditorium. No. And you must be very good, otherwise you are finished. And you never be an actress. Well, then you're a finished actress, aren't you? <laughs> very finished. Were you on the stage in Germany, or did yes. you make TV commercials for lager beer? <laughs> no, it wasn't television. No. I play on the stage about 150 parts and on the movies about 20. 150 pounds? 20. You don't look that heavy, huh? Parts, parts, not parts. Parts? You had 150 parts? Parts on oh, the parts. stage. Oh, yes. parts. Oh, parts. I thought you said parts. And about 20 films. Oh, movies. Yeah. Well, what were some of the movies you made, Alfie? The Congress Tanz, Der Storstreich, Die Lustigen Weiber von Wien, Ehe Sanatorium. And then I play on the stage. Uh, Alt Heidelberg, Cyprien, Lilofe, and I think noch in Flügelkleider. Oh, I think noch in Flügelkleider. Right? <laughs> I, I remember that one very well. <laughs> yeah. I saw that picture in English. Yes? It was called Marn Park Kettle in the Incredible Shrinking Frank Kettle. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done any acting in Hollywood, Elsie? Till now, not. I love to do it. You mean you want to get in the movie? Yes, I like to do it. Well, that's unusual. Most girls that come out here want to be car hops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well, how long did you say you've been in America, Elfie? Two, me, two years. Two years? Huh? Yeah. What are your impressions of the United States? Oh, there? it's wonderful. You like it here? Yes, amazing was New York for me. And as this amazing very... was New York for you? Oh. Well. And as this very, I love the supermarket here because you can take anything what you like. <laughs> You take anything you want in the supermarket? Yeah. That's true, but if they catch you, you wind up eating in San Quentin. I don't think so. No, no. No. Usually I ask a girl from another country what she thinks of American men, just, you know, just to be different. Yeah. Do German women compare favorably with American women? Oh, they are very different, yes. They're very different? Yeah, yeah. We say from the German uh, wives, they like Küche, Kinder, Kirche. That means the kitchen? Kitchen. Church. Sure. And children. And children, yeah. yes. That's the three Ks. Yeah, three Ks. That's not so different here. The American yeah. woman's life is composed of the three Bs. Yeah. Bingo, bills, and beauty parlors. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 
But you're a lovely couple, and I enjoy mm-hmm. talking Thank to you. And, Elfie, I hope you get a lot of jobs yeah. on, on television. Thank and, you very much. And in the movies. And I you should be so. a very attractive oh, girl. I hope so. And I'm going to give you a chance uh, just to show my appreciation to win a lot of money here tonight. Mm-hmm. I presume you took baseball since you just arrived here from Germany. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, you selected movies, old and new, huh? Yes. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. Will you tell Fenneman and Jaiman what you think of him, Elsie? What I think about him? In German. He's a good-looking man, a in, handsome In German. Man. But he's... Ah, in German? Yeah. Oh, they see him very good, but they are a bit small. I think they need to know what to do. You know what she said? <laughs> no, but it sounds wonderful. Uh, well, if you get four in a row right, you win a thousand dollars. Oh, schön, yes, sir. Yeah, and you want one answer between us, you yeah. two, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, who directed Lifeboat, 39 Steps, The Trouble with Harry, and Dial M for Murder, among many others? Talk it over. Hitchcock. That's right. Hitchcock. That's right. Hitchcock. Hitchcock. That's correct. Sure. You haven't the first one right. Uh, yeah. Now, what is the name I, of the... What did you say? <laughs> I, just talking to myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, confine yourself to that. <laughs> All right, who played the feminine lead opposite Gordon McRae in Oklahoma and Carousel? Who played? The female lead. Liz Taylor. Liz Taylor. Gordon McRae in Oklahoma and Carousel. Oh, in who played opposite her? Him. Those. Shirley Jones. Now, Shirley, you should have known that. Shirley Jones? No, I don't know. Who was the feminine star of The Rainmaker? Oh, Rainmaker, this is Hesh Lancaster. The feminine star. A feminine. Who? The feminine. The Dama. Yeah, the Dama. I understand. Lancaster? Yeah, no. No, the Dama. Oh, the Dama. Not the dame, the dama. <laughs> Kennen Sie nicht the dama? I know, I know. Katharine Hepburn. Yeah, Katharine Hepburn, Hepburn, but the bell is already where we're going to give it to you because you are so nice. <laughs> Thank you. You now have one right. We're yeah. just as crooked as you are. Here. <laughs> now, what British actor, why did you take this category? What British actor starred in Kind Hearts and Coronets, The Lavender Hill Mob, and The Man in the White Suit? A British and, actor. And the white suit. The British Man in the white suit. The Lavender Hill mob and kind hearts and coronets. Kind hearts and coronets. Incidentally, it's one of the greatest pictures I've ever seen. Who is it? Well, it was Alec Guinness. Well, back to what? Back to what? Sir? One, uh, one wrong. One wrong. Right. Right. Oh. Now, don't get discouraged. I'm sure you're going to lose. Now. We are always with you. Nothing to do with you. <laughs> Here are the stars. You tell me the picture. Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, and Grace Kelly. Uh, high What's society. the name of the picture? High Society. High Society is right. One right. Mm. Anthony <laughs> Quinn starred in the award-winning Best Foreign Picture in 1956. What was the picture? Foreign who picture. Who said it? I Anthony the Quinn. Anthony Quinn. Starred in the award-winning Best Foreign Picture of 1956. What was the name of the picture? Anthony Quinn. Um, oh, I saw this thing. I don't know it. No. It was La Strada. Sorry. Famous picture, great picture, yeah. Well, you now have one wrong again. Oh. I noticed before. I got a lot of paper left here. Uh, what picture. song... What song from Man Who Knew Too Much won an Academy Award? The man that was too This is a Hitchcock. But I don't know who. This was a song from a picture called The Man Who Knew Too Much. It won an Academy Award, the song. The song? Ah, the song that Doris Day makes a song about the child. It's Case Sarah Sarah. I don't know the, the title of the song, but I know he. She well, makes it, Doris Day. You'd have to know the title, otherwise ah. we couldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kilda. I can't know the title. Of the song. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Elsie, I'm sorry you didn't yes, know the title no. of that, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to give you one question so you can have yes, a chance to win $100, $50 a piece. <laughs> eh? And I don't want any help because this is tough. 
What kind of an animal always carries a rabbit's foot? (laughs) (laughs) No, a rabbit is right. I'm sorry you didn't win more, but thanks anyway for being with us. You were a very fine and nice couple, huh? (laughs) We'll find out if our first couple will try for $10,000 in just a moment. Leroy, what are you doing, my boy? A little scientific research for my English class. No, oh, I was always very good at English. What's pronouncing stuff? No, oh, I was a whiz at pronouncing. You go ahead, try me. Okay, Unc. How do you pronounce H O U S E? H O U. Oh, <laughs> house. Absolutely correct. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, how do you pronounce H O R S E? H O R. Oh, that's easy. That's horse. Fine. Now, how do you pronounce H O U R S? H O U R S. Oh, uh, Howard's. Uh, I can pronounce it ours. Oh, for course. <laughs> Here, I've got one for you. How do you pronounce NBC? Oh, I know that one. You pronounce NBC entertainment. You're right. No trick about that one. You can depend on NBC to bring you the best in radio entertainment of all kinds, from bandstand in the morning... To drama in the afternoon. And news on the hour throughout the day. And don't forget, Tuesday night is a dandy night to tune in Nightline. That's what we're on, folks. The Great Gildersleeve. My uncle. You bet. Every Tuesday night. Be sure to tune in on NBC Radio. All right, George, we're ready to see who wants to get a crack at all the money. Will you bring out the first couple? All right, Louise Squire and Ted Anderson, would you come back, please? Now, you've won $1,000 so far. If you decide to try for the 10 and you fail, you wind up with a total of 500 What are you going to do? You think. We'll go for it. Uh, you're going to go for the big money. Now, get together and pick a number from 1 to 10 and then spin this wheel. If any number besides the one you pick comes up, the question is worth 2000 If your number comes up, the question is worth 10 now, what number do you want? You say. Five. Five? Five. Give it a turn. Your number was five, and it landed on seven, so this question is worth $2,000. Leonard Hall was chairman of the Republican National Committee in the 1956 election. For two thousand dollars, who was the very active Democratic National Committee chairman in that election? Talk it over. All right, what's the answer you two have decided upon? Uh, Mitchell. No, I'm sorry, you should know this. It's Paul Butler. Well, you missed it, but you wind up with $500. That isn't too bad. Congratulations, and thanks for being with us. And thank you. You Bet Your Life is transcribed in Hollywood. Produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman reminding you to tune in again next week, same time, same station, to hear the one, the only, Groucho. And see Groucho every Thursday evening on NBC television. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces around the world. For the housewife, the wage earner, investors big and small. Commentary of vital interest on Pocketbook News. Tonight on most of these NBC stations.